What's up guys, it's your boy Ooch, and um, I have a question for you guys. So it's been a few months since this show that we're about to talk about has been aired. What happened to Megalobox? I have literally been sitting here for months, wondering, pondering, thinking of what could have possibly happened, and why everyone just went silent after the last episode aired. And I'm here today to tell you exactly what I think actually happened. And the reason why I bring this up now is because recently at Comic-Con, Viz announced that Megalobox is going to be airing on Toonami with a brand new English dub on December 8th, aka the day after Super Smash Bros. Ultimate comes out on Switch. Now, I know that has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about, but I'm just kind of curious as to why this is even getting a dub in the first place and why it's even getting put on to television based on what I'm about to talk about. First things first, Megalobox is a show that I was heavily looking forward to. I saw the look, the feel, how it sounded, the way it was coming off. To me, it seemed like this was a classic anime done in the modern era. You don't really see too many anime anime produced in the style that Megalobox was shot at. People got vibes of Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champloo. Shows like this that use this classic vintage look and even the sound of it, the soundtrack, made people look forward to this show way more. And then it came around and then it actually happened. And then everyone and people sat around their TVs or computer screens and were heavily invested in what they were watching. It was a 13 episode series that literally sent centered around one fight okay let's just keep that in mind it was centered around one fight and of course obviously from here on now i have to pretty much go over spoilers now you know i'm one that doesn't like really talking about spoilers because i hate spoilers myself but for this video i'm making a freaking exception first things first my man junk dog aka joe aka gearless joe the main character of the show fro and all this man is literally the underdog of underdogs okay in this setting of megalobox they have what i call a plot device which is basically a subject or matter that is involved in a show that is used to basically have the viewer reader whatever have something stuck in their mind and say okay this is how everything works this is how everything's run so example naruto they have jutsu black clover they have magic so on and so forth megalobox they have the gear and the gear in this time frame obviously it's set in some kind of futuristic year boxing has now evolved into using mechanical arms and or gear that basically i guess enhance the flow of boxing a little bit it's kind of weird to think about but if that is actually the future of boxing hmm that's an interesting take on what might come in 20 years or so but the fact of the matter is the gear itself is a plot device why because gearless joe he is now even a bigger underdog at this point when you realize it that wow he is literally fighting all of these people that are using gear and he is known to be gearless joe because he is winning against all of these other people that are using this device they're using this thing kind of like with black clover asta is the main character and he has no magic yet everyone else has magic deku from my hero academia quirkless mostly everyone else has a quirk but until all might pass him the freaking hair strand and say here take my power and gradually he's making it more of his own over time with growth and practice kind of the similar situation but in this show he is gearless joe which he does use no gear so it just makes his character even more interesting because again he's already the underdog he's already from the slums he's already this character that has a mysterious background which they don't even really go that much into and they they really spend more time talking about nanbu and sacho a little bit who are his managers and sacho is kind of like a second coach if you will nanbu's been the one that has been getting joe all of these gigs with fighting and he's been pretty much been his coach ever since he found him and so at, at the start he basically takes l's for money because nanbu works for what looks like to be like the yakuza or something like that but then eventually they end up trying to join megalonia which is like the wrestlemania event of all of this boxing and so we go on episodes pass by he builds a rivalry with yuri which is like the antagonist character of this whole show from the beginning this is the fight 
that we are literally building up towards. He has a storyline where he has to now go through each and every obstacle and every episode kept getting more interesting and more intricate and as a viewer personally when I would watch this I would literally be like wow I can't believe they're taking it in this direction wow I can't believe they're going in this direction I have no idea where they're going in this direction now at one point I was like how are they gonna come over this there was literally a section where he got so far in the actual leaderboards where he was gonna make it to megalonia they literally found out that his id was fake and then that was it i was like how are they gonna come back after that like what are they gonna do but yet again they literally just showed up to diversity's door and was like Yeet. So of course we move right along, we keep fighting other opponents, I have opponent after opponent, he wins, he wins, he wins, he's always coming close to losing, and then what do you know, we're finally at the climactic portion of the show, and this is literally the moment we've been waiting for, Yuri versus Gearless Joe. And what's even crazier is that Yuri realizes and he's witnessing Joe go on this path, this journey. He has been overcoming all of the odds already as the underdog, the junk yard dog. And he's literally beating up on all these people, on all these foes with no gear. Just pure boxing, pure fighting. And that is what Yuri saw. And he just formed this humongous respect for this man to the point where Yuri literally literally removed his own gear and what i mean remove his own gear i'm not talking like he just unplugged the john and that was it no this man had some high tech superficial johns that was literally built in to his frame his body it was a part of him and it was so supernatural it was like he had supercomputers built up all up in his arms that it would react for him like literally like it just like that, you know, like it would, he wouldn't even have to think. It would compute things and he wouldn't even have to worry about it. And because he wanted a fair fight, he wanted it to be even. Mano a mano, fight against fight, glove and glove, fist for fist, cuff to cuff. I was like, this is what I'm building up for. This is what I'm getting hyped for. This is what I'm getting excited for. And then the last episode happened. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I'm sitting there in a room with the lovely cutie pie and we're watching this we're about to watch this we have my ipad ready we're sitting in front of the john i got crunch roll open and i'm like oh let's go honey we're about to watch it john. and then the episode was over and we were left with a future site we were left with a scene that was held years after the fight took place and there's yuri and there's joe and there's all the other familiar characters that are still lingering around. And yet, they talk about what had happened. But they don't even reveal who won or reveal the damn fight! How do you do that? How do you do that? See, the one thing I don't understand is when anyone, anyone creates a show, creates some type of piece of media, has all this buildup for something that's literal, that's deliberate, that's like, wow, this is what we're expecting to see. This is what's gonna happen. And then they don't even show us like the potential. Like that, that, that fight alone could have literally made that whole show so great. But it is shows like this that literally bring it all down to a closing abrupt end that give it such a failing grade altogether. And it's a shame because I will admit this, Bangalow Box was one of my favorite shows to keep up with. As a matter of fact, before they started taking down all the reaction videos from not just me, but from a lot of other channels that I was informed of later on, it was something that I enjoyed keeping up with and reacting to week to week and talking to you guys about what was going on, what was I, what I was looking forward to. I'm just thinking to myself, there is a team out out there that's sitting around a table that's making all these executive decisions with what they want to do with this story and somebody had the idea to say we're gonna build this fight up we're gonna hype this up we're gonna build this show basically around this one thing and then we're not even gonna do it at the last episode Bruh. oh my god with that i sit here and i ask the question this is actually a shout out to one of my old segments i used to do on this channel which i'm pretty much thinking on the fence about bringing back why
Did they do this? And why are they even trying to bring it back on Toonami so that all of the people that didn't even go through what I went through have to now go through every Saturday night? Because let me tell you something. As an anime viewer, as a fan, as someone that obviously is encompassed by anime and manga and video games and all of the relating subjects literally 24-7, it is very hard sometimes to watch Toonami on Saturday nights. And sometimes I'm even out and about at an event doing commentary, competing, or just not home altogether. For those that actually do spend their time on Saturday nights, tuning into Toonami, giving them their ratings, supporting the anime, watching all the shows, and then they're gonna even check out Megalobox. It's almost like I don't want them to go through the pain and suffering and anguish that I went through as a fan. Because guess what? After that last episode aired, no one said a thing. After it was over, it was like it never happened. It was creepy because the last episode aired. I went home. I went on Twitter. I went on Facebook. Went on YouTube. I didn't see a single peep. I didn't see anyone or hear anyone talk about it. And if there was anyone that did, then my apologies because I guess it just literally was lost in the feed. It was just one of those things that even after months have passed, not a meme, not a single reference, not a joke, nothing. I'm over here sitting over here like I'm in the damn Twilight Zone like, are we just gonna pretend like that just happened and not say anything? I guess this is kind of like a review, a warning, and a what the hell happened to Megalobox kind of video. But I will say this. Yes, it was good. I did enjoy it. There was a lot of things that I loved about it. Especially, like I said, the soundtrack, that old school style of animation. Kind of like mid-90s, 90s, not like late 90s kind of animation. I loved the direction it was going in. But once that end came around, it just literally gave me flashbacks with other other anime that I wasted my time with. And that's exactly, I guess, what I'm getting at. Unfortunately, Megalobox was a waste of time. And that really breaks my heart because as a fan, as someone that really looks to all of the positives and tries to think of all of the good things to bring about something, because at the end of the day, you have to understand, there's people that are working on this. That's a project. That's their job. There's literally someone behind a computer screen working hours on end, blood, sweat, and tears, putting their life into this. And yet, they produce something knowingly how they're going to end it, and it got greenlit. In a sense, yeah, I'm really heavily disappointed, and I am warning everyone everyone that does decide to give it a chance you heard everything that I said now so from here on out the ball is in all y'all court so that was my thoughts that was my opinion that was me that was my I guess impromptu review realistically I just want to inform y'all what actually happened to Megalobox don't be surprised because yes like I said at the beginning of this video Viz is bringing it to Toonami with a brand new English dub on December 8th and you know what for the sake of being the fan that I am of anime and lots of other things relating to it i most likely will definitely check it out and give you guys my thoughts on how i think they did with the english dub cast that they selected but until then guys hope you guys have a great day may the power be with you make sure to like share subscribe hit me up on twitter let me know what you guys thought about this video in the discord especially in my discord and if you support the channel and like to see more like this definitely keep on supporting and joining the uchi gang fam by becoming a patron today and if you want to check out more anime kind of like megalobox well definitely don't hesitate to click on that link in my description to make yourself a free funimation now account so you can also support me and the anime industry the legal the free and the right way and i'll see you guys next time